I'm Professor Eli Yablonovich of uh, University of California, uh, Berkeley, and I have uh, uh, I've, I feel very at home at this conference because uh, it's all about silicon photonics, and I was a co-founder of really the first silicon photonics company, uh, which is called Lextera, uh, which is now part of Cisco, and so it's been great to see the progress. Uh, the uh, in the meantime, I founded three other companies, so I haven't had time to go back and figure out all the exciting new things that happen in silicon photonics, and that's what I learned this morning. Very exciting uh, progress. I'm Gijs de Bruin, and I'm interning with the office of the CTO. Professor Jablonovic, thank you so much for being here today. We've already seen quite some talks. What did you enjoy most about the workshop so far? As usual, the most enjoyable is to hear about the startup companies, because each of them is, is very brilliant, very smart people, uh, but it's, um, it's quite an adventure for them. And there's a lot of human interest. You see that all the difficulties that they're going through, and uh, it's uh, very challenging to be in a startup. And uh, there's a lot of human interest. You can sort of, it's, it's an undertone. You, 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 they, they're talking about technology, but underneath it, it it's about uh, how can I be successful and so on. You have founded and co-founded multiple companies yourself. What advice do you have for the startups that are present here today? In silicon photonics, uh, I think there's too much competition in the data communications area. So you need to find some uh, new applications. And if you have a new material, it's very hard to make money in a materials company. Uh, it could be adopted, congratulations, but uh, if you want to uh, have a financially successful company, you have to come up with a unique application and have uh, uh, some way of defending it so that not everybody jumps into it and becomes your competitor. How will Silicon Photonics transform the future of technology, in your opinion? Well, it's, uh, uh, the datacom function it seems to be extremely important, and uh, many l large and small companies are dedicated to uh, datacom. And uh, we're going to see it go to shorter and shorter distances. So the silicon photonics is competitive uh, beyond uh, one or 200 meters. Uh, th uh, that's actually very meaningful because the data centers, the, hu the very large data centers, which is basically Amazon and Microsoft, those data centers are huge buildings, more than 200 meters long. And uh, so uh, they have every reason to standardize on silicon photonics because then they can do the short reach, which would, they would otherwise be done by Vixels, and they can do the long reach as well. They can just have a single communications uh, product. One of the topics today is how we can move towards a faster, more flexible and sustainable data center using optical communication technology. What are, in your opinion, some of the biggest challenges in making silicon photonics the default for da data centers? I think uh, the, uh, the default, I believe, is the, uh, comes about because the data centers tend to be very large. Uh, and uh, because they're so large, uh, you can't really use a multi-mode uh, uh, VIXEL solution. So it has to be uh, single mode, and silicon photonics is single mode. Uh, so uh, I think it's in the driver's seat for uh, datacom applications. Uh, now, beyond that, we, ne we need new applications. Uh, for example, uh, the um, uh, LiDAR. Now, I have a car uh, with, uh, you know, it's a fancy car with maybe a dozen ultrasound sensors around the periphery of the car, and uh, they have a dozen. I think uh, maybe a more expensive car would have two dozen ultrasonic uh, sensors. And they're okay, but they're very short distance. And what if you, ha if, if you could replace it with um, silicon photonics would be short distance and long distance uh, could be uh, much more adaptable. But the cost has to be uh, very low. The, the ultrasound is very low in cost. The silicon photonics, because of the nature of uh, silicon photonic integration, can be just as low cost as anything else. So I think th that's an example of an application. Uh, but there are many uh, other applications in uh, LiDAR and rangefinders and so forth. Uh, then there are the medical applications. And uh, uh, so you, you have those. And uh, there are many other applications. Uh, it's um, uh, basically, I think it comp can compete with uh, vertical cavity lasers where they're used. For example, they're used uh, for identification of the user in the iPhone. 
And uh, well, if in silicon photonics you can have a grading coupler and it comes out vertically just as if it were a, a Vixel. And uh, so I think we're going to see a, a lot of uh, that going on. And I would say the major component, say what is the most exciting component? Well, we integrated the de photo detector, we integrated the modulator. But I think the most exciting component is the grading coupler. Because the grading coupler means you, you can come up out of the silicon and perform some functions, interact with the external world, whether you're uh, scanning a person's face or you're providing uh, LiDAR at uh, longer, short distances from a vehicle. So I think we need those new applications. How do you think applied materials can contribute to the innovation needed in the area of silicon photonics? I assume applied materials is already contributing because, uh, for example, Alextera uh, standardized on TSMC as the foundry. And I'm sure TSMC is buying a lot of your equipment. Uh, particularly things that are a little bit unusual, like we heard this morning, uh, the epitaxial growth of germanium on silicon. So it's a lattice mismatch growth, but it's good enough for photo detectors. Uh, so uh, that, that is a rather specialized application. But it, it's all, it goes back uh, quite a few years, so uh, maybe it's older applied materials equipment. Uh, but in the new areas, I think uh, what we heard this morning is some new materials. I think it's, di it's difficult for them to make money, but uh, applied materials can buy those uh, materials companies uh, and uh, provide the equipment to uh, manage them and to deposit them and so forth. So there's room for uh, new forms of deposition. We heard uh, some organic materials. We heard other types of uh, lithium nib. We heard other types of novel materials which are going to be integrated with silicon and applied materials will be well positioned to include that in the repertoire to keep your customers happy. Dr. Jablonovic, thanks again for being here. Um, to conclude, is there anything else that you would like to add? Well, I'm very grateful that Applied Materials is doing this. I'm grateful for selfish reasons. I'm learning a lot. And uh, so I'm, uh, I, I think it's been uh, a very exciting and fruitful day.